Okay, welcome to the second installment of our offset section view for section view number three. Let's go ahead and open up a fresh GT template, place your base. This time your base is not going to be your front view, it's actually going to be the top. I'm going to draw this and set this up just like it shows in the packet, or the packet I got it from, where it shows my two larger circles of the counterboards up towards the top. So I'm going to switch this so it's like that. I'm not sure if I'm going to need half scale or one to one just yet. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this this direction. Okay, sorry for the weird jump. We're actually not going to place it on this direction. We're going to place it on so we have our two larger circles here up at the top, and we have the small one that's just a hole without that big cylindrical shaped object on top of it there. So that's just going to be it. Okay, so that is my top view I'm placing on there. I'm creating a section view based off this. So selection view. Um, this time I'm not going to go from the center. I'm going to just kind of touch these points. I'm just going to hover them so it recognizes the point here. So I go from here. I'm going to go all the way through the cylinder. Make sure I don't go past this because I need to make room for that as well. So just about here. Straight down. It wants to automatically snap to midpoint there again. Go straight through the middle. Make sure it's straight up and down. Going right through the middle again. Click. I'm going to right click continue and pull off my section view to the side here this time instead, like so. So we're not going to really worry about a, an isometric or anything for this one. All right, before we go any further, make sure that you do save everything. So do a save as. I don't think I've even done it yet. Save as better. So this is my section view number three. All right. Now from here, we're going to annotate. I'm pretty sure we can get everything done just based on what we have here. So I'm going to put on my center marks and everything. Make sure you're selecting the largest arcs. So that should do there. You actually need one for that. Okay. Then I'm going to do center line bisector for a lot of this. So I can go from this uppermost part from here to here. Oh, why didn't that work? Oh, because I want a regular center line, that's why, not center line bisector. Regular center line from there to there. Right click create. I'm going to need another one from there to there. And then this last one I can do a bisector. Alright, so that should be it for all your center marks and center lines. All right, so now we can start to place these dimensions. I'm going to pause here so you don't have to watch me place every single thing on here because a lot of these you can handle and know what to do and figure out on your own. So I'm going to pause and you can come back. All right, so you can see so far I did things a little bit less conventional than I normally would. I put dimensions off to the side here to the left, not between the views, because I need to save room for some of these other notes for our things like our chamfer. So that's why I placed the 1.5 off to the side and these off over here and these up to the top there. Otherwise, you try to keep them in between. In this case, we're just really just not going to have room. All right, so make sure you for, don't forget to put in your times two for a lot of these. And also, I did forget to place... Do them over here this time. Oops. Point five. Okay, so you can see why I'm pausing this going back. Because a lot of it is watching me do this. All right, so there's that. So make sure you forget, don't forget about those. All right. And I left all the space here so I can start to put in some of these heights and things on this side. Um, so we can put dimensions. I need to know the height of this. It's actually, yeah, it can be considered a height. You know, it's kind of a depth the way we're looking at it, but we need those and those. And then, of course, I forgot to put in, let's see, from there to there. I'm going to put in my square symbol in front of that. Okay. All right, so now I can start to focus on some of these other things. So I can put this in to that. Then I also need to know from the edge. Then also how far down as well. So some of this, again, like I said, might start to get a little bit cluttered, but that's okay. Let's kind of try to work around it. So there's that. 
And I know this did update is supposed to be it was supposed to be something else. What was it? Why did it do radius? It should say diameter. I'm not too sure why this one's popping up as a radius 0.13 and not a diameter. I think it might have something to do with um, our section view here. One other thing I did notice here in my first view here, I do not have my hidden lines on. Make sure I have those so I can show that part there. The hidden lines, okay. All right, so just go with that. And let's see here. So I think the last things that I just need are just these parts about my chamfer and my fillets. So I'm going to put in here a fillet a radius of 0.13. Then I have my chamfer notes from here to here. Let's see where do I want to put that. There we go. So stick that one there. Then we also have this one here. All right, I think that'll just about do it. I'm going to put all this in view, go ahead and pause and double check everything while I do the same. Okay, just a few quick things that I did notice that I made a mistake on. I need to put in this height as well. So from here to here, I can snap those in. I know this kind of breaks our rule of our conventions we know about dimensioning, but in this case, it's not really much of a choice. So I guess we could fix that. Let's do this. Let's go from here. To there instead. There we go. That'll fix our problem of our dimensioning. All right. And so my very, very last thing I'm going to put on here, I need to know about this chamfer, this countersink down here. Since it didn't make a countersink, I'm going to use it as a chamfer. And we already know that the diameter is 0.25, this hole that goes through down here. So I'm just going to put this chamfer in right here. And I think in this case, I'm not going to have a choice, but to put it right on top of the object. Sometimes you got to break those rules, but it's okay. So now we know that chamfer there is 0.13 at 45 degrees. And I think this will absolutely do it this time. So go ahead and pause. Make sure you got everything. All right, I did figure something out. Uh, why that was a radius before is because we put on dimension and not hole and thread. So choose hole and thread for this one. There we go. Now we have our 0.25 through. That's what I was looking for. Now, I promise, we are absolutely done. Don't forget to change out your field text, put in your name, and the project title, this one actually has a name. This one's called a mounting plate, so you can put that in there if you'd like. Just gonna put in all caps. Mounting plate. And that'll do it.